Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on solve one-step addition and subtraction equations. Before we get started, we're going to start off our vocabulary. An equation is a sentence stating that two quantities are equal. I mean, two equals two is an equation. Now, the value of a variable that makes an equation true is called the solution of the equation. So, in this equation, we have x plus 2 equals 6. Well, what can we put in for x to make it true? Well, 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. Now, the way we can solve this is by subtracting that 2 from both sides to get x equals 4. Um, now, x plus 2 equals 6, and x equals 4 are called equivalent equations because they have the same solution, 4. Circle the equations below that are equivalent to x equals 3. Well, if I subtracted this 3 from both sides, I get x equals, well, 3. So here's 1. Now, here, if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get x equals 6 minus 1 is 5. That's not it. Subtract 6 from both sides here, x equals 2, that's not it. Subtract 3 on both sides here, x equals 0, that's not it. Subtract 1 on both sides here, and x equals, hey, 3. And for our last one, subtract 2 from both sides here, and 5 minus 2 is 3, so hey, I have a third equation. Now, our real-world link is video games. Robin had some video games, and then she bought four more video games. Now she has ten games. This scenario can be described using the equation x plus 4 equals 10. Our first question is, what does x represent in the equation? Well, basically, the x represents... are unknown. Well, what don't we know? Well, that's the number of video games she had to start with. So, this is the number of games Robin had to start. And our last question, write two different equations that are equivalent to x plus 4 equals 10. Well, the easy one, subtract 4 from both sides and you get x equals 6. Well, what if I multiply both sides of that by 2? Well, I would get 2x equals, well, 6 times 2 is 12. So that's another equation that ends up being x equals 6, and there's a whole lot more aside from that. Now, our first property here is the subtraction property of equality, and it states that two sides of an equation remain equal when you subtract the same number from each side. And our symbols, if a equals b, then a minus c equals b minus c. Let's make that even easier. What if I have the number 4? I'm going to say, well, 4 equals 4. Well, what if I subtract 1 on both sides? I get 3 equals 3. So I can subtract the same number from both sides of an equation, and the equation is still true. Now, it says you can use bar diagrams in the work back backward problem solving strategy to solve equations arithmetically. Or you can use the properties of equality to solve equations algebraically, and that's what this lesson is all about. In our first guided example here, we have solve x plus 6 equals 4. Check your solution. Well, if you subtract 6 from both sides, you get x equals 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. Their check step, they put the negative 2 back in for x. Negative 2 plus 6, does it equal 4? Sure. And so our solution is negative 2. Now in this example, we have negative 5 equals b plus 8, and the opposite of addition here is subtraction. So when we subtract 8 from both sides, we get negative 13 equals b. Put that negative 13 back in for b, and we have our check step being negative 5 equals negative 5. Now let's try a few of these on our own. y plus 6 equals 9. Our directions are to solve and check. 
Well, the opposite of addition here is subtraction, so if I choose to subtract 6 from both sides, the 6 cancels out, and I'm left with y is on the left side equals 9 minus 6 is 3. So y equals 3 should be my solution to the equation. But we do need to check all of our equations. So we start that by rewriting the original y plus 6 equals 9. And if we substitute back in our answer, which was 3, 3 plus 6 should equal 9. What's 3 plus 6? Well, 9 and equals 9. So we are good to go. That is correct. Now I can't stress enough how important it is to actually follow through on your check steps. I've been teaching for a while now and I cannot tell you the number of times I've seen students write out y plus 6 equals 9 and say you accidentally say y equals 4. Well I've seen students put in 4 for y plus 6 equals 9 and then 4 plus 6 well we just skip that. We say, all right, 9 equals 9, we're good to go. But in fact, if I asked anybody now in the 7th grade, what is 4 plus 6? Every single person will say 10. No one's going to say 9. But yet this happens because we don't follow through. We just assume we have the right answer and we just show the check step because Mr. Richard said show the check step. Now make sure you show the check step and actually are thinking as you do it. Now, in B x plus 3 equals 1. Let's subtract 3 from both sides here. The plus 3 minus 3 cancels out. We're left with 0 on there. So x equals 1 minus 3. Now there's nothing wrong with saying, oh, geez, I have 1 minus 3. I need to keep change opposite this. And 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. I mean, if you need to write that out, go ahead. If you don't, that's okay too. But make sure you get x equals negative 2. And this is where our check step is really important when we're dealing with these negative numbers. Start with your original equation, x plus 3 equals 1. Put in the negative 2 for x, negative 2 plus 3 equals 1. And negative 2 plus 3 is 1 and 1 equals 1, so we're good to go. Now, say you made a mistake here and said y, or x was 2. Well, if you're showing a good check step, you would put in that 2 for x and said 2 plus 3 equals 1. It, it seems hard to believe right now, but I've seen this written 1 equals 1. Okay, we're good. In fact, we're not, since 2 plus 3 is not 1. Again, don't be that. Don't make that mistake. Take your time, show your work, show a good check step, and make sure you're right. Because if you were to get down to this 2 plus 3 equals 1, you're right, 5 doesn't equal 1, that means you made a mistake, and that's okay. Go back and fix it. Now in our last equation here, negative 3 equals a plus 4, our variable is on the right side here. Pay attention to that, because what we're going to be subtracting now is this plus 4. So we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. This cancels out. And negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7 equals A. And when we go to check, we'll rewrite the original equation. Negative 3 equals A plus 4. Substitute in negative 7 for A. And negative 3 is going to equal negative 3. And so we're good to go. Our solution is negative 7 equals A. Now in our guided example here for example 3, an angelfish can grow to be 12 inches long, which is also a foot. But if an angelfish is 8 and a half inches longer than a clownfish, how long is a clownfish? And you can see where they set up the equation. Well, 12 equals the clownfish C plus 8 and a half. And then you can solve that equation by subtracting the 8.5 on both sides to get 3.5. So a clownfish is 3.5 inches long. And now we have our example. The highest recorded temperature in Warsaw, Missouri is 118 degrees. This is 158 degrees greater than the lowest recorded temperature. 
find the lowest recorded temperature. Well, basically we have the 118. And we're told that is, and is is a key word for an equal sign, 158 degrees greater than the lowest recorded temperature. So we can take the 158 and say, well, we'll add that to the lowest recorded temperature, since the lowest recorded temperature, T, plus 158 will get us to the 118. Now to solve this equation, subtract 158 from both sides of the equation, and our solution here is going to be negative 40 degrees equals T. Now what about our addition property of equality? The addition property of equality states that two sides of an equation remain equal when you add the same number to each side. It's the same thing basically as our subtraction. If we have 2 equals 2 and I choose to add 1 to both sides of the equation here, I would get 3 equals 3. I mean it's just a property of equality. You add something to both sides or you subtract the same thing to bo from both sides, and you're going to have the same equation. That's what all of our equations depend on. Our e example here, solve x minus 2 equals 1 and check your solution. We have to add the 2 to both sides, and x equals 3. Now let's try a few of these on our own. We have y minus 3 equals 4, so we're going to do the opposite of subtraction, which is addition, so we're going to add a 3 to both sides, and y equals 7. As for our check step, start with the original equation, y minus 3 equals 4. Place your answer, 7, in for y, minus 3 equals 4. 7 minus 3 is 4, so 4 equals 4. Example f, r minus 4, equals negative 2. Let's add a 4 to both sides. This cancels, and we're left with r equals 2. And in our check step, rewrite the original equation, r minus 4 equals negative 2. Put 2 in for r, 2 minus 4 should be negative 2, and sure enough, even if you have to write out your keep change opposite, 2 plus negative 4 and 2 minus 4 both equal negative 2. So r equals 2. And then q minus r equals negative 9. Or excuse me, not r, but 8. q minus 8 equals negative 9. Add the 8 to both sides. This cancels out. And we're left with q equals negative 1. And as we go to check this last equation here, q minus 8 equals negative 9. Put negative 1 in for q. Negative 1 minus 8 equals negative 9. And again, if you need to keep change opposite, please do. Since negative 1 plus negative 8 is negative 9 equals negative 9. So q equals negative 1. And here in our word problem, a pair of jeans costs $25. This is $14 less than the cost of a pair of jeans. Find the cost of the jeans. Well, we set the equation up here. 25 equals the jeans minus 14. Add the 14 to both sides, and the jeans cost $39. And we have our example now. The average lifespan of a tiger is 17 years. This is three years less than the average lifespan of a lion. Write and solve an equation to find the average lifespan of a lion. Now, the tiger is 17. And this is, that's our key word for equal, this is here, equal, three years less than the average lifespan of a lion. So we're going to say the lifespan of a lion, L, We'll do a cursive L here, minus 3. So 17 equals L minus 3. And to solve this equation, add the 3 to both sides. This cancels, and we're left with 
20 equals our lion's age. So 20 years. That's it for this lesson. Happy solving and checking.